the quest continues today we are looking at amd radeon ai pro r9700 a workstation class gpu that tries to bring serious ai horsepower back to normal desks and small studios not a hype rocket not a hello part meant for press headlines but a practical card that says you don't really need a data center contract or a proprietary software leash to do real local AI work. If you have been stuck between overbuilt consumer flagships and overpriced enterprise SKUs, this is AMD's counter proposal. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Coming back to this card, this new card the R9700 pairs 32GB of GDDR6 with a 256-bit bus and 640GB per second of bandwidth. This is built on RDNA4 with 64 compute units and 128 AI accelerators in a dual-slot 300W design. Peak math looks like up to 191 teraflops, FP16 dense and up to 1500 tops in four sparse numbers that matter for modern inference and mixed precision workloads. There are a lot of other goodies around display port and you can read it in the spec sheet and I will drop the link in video's description. The thing is that if you have ever tried to run bigger local models like we do on the channel, you already know 16 GB gets tight fast, really, really fast. AMD's own usage bar, bar lines up with real-world experience, popular LLMs and image models routinely chew through the low to mid-20s, and the heavier LLM configs can land around the 27 to 28 GB mark. That's the practical case for 32 GB. It's not breaking rights, it's headroom, you are not consist constantly trimming context windows, swapping layers to system RAM or sharding everything across multiple cards on day one. And that is what I have been doing. So that is what excites me quite a lot. Now, if you look at this technical specification and there are a lot of them, maybe I will just make it a bit more bigger. There you go. So if you look at this technical specification, you can see that the raw peaks are impressive for the class, but what stands out is how the card is balanced for sustained workstation use. What I mean by that is that 300 watt TBP and dual slot blower mean you can actually slot two or even three cards in a standard tower and keep thermals in check, no exotic loops and no 600 watt melt your connector moments. That matters most in daily grind then really splashy single GPU best case scores and that might increase your reach to bigger and better models. Because I don't think so that this is just a toy limited to one workload. It has got AV1 encode decode and support for AMD's Fidelity FX, which is fluid motion frames and adrenaline features mean the same box that runs your model can also accelerate your image editing and video editing function, which is quite promising. Now, if you look at NVIDIA, where it lands with NVIDIA, let's be very realistic, very realistic. NVIDIA is the leader. It still owns the software gravity well. CUDA is entrenched. Lots of tooling defaults to it, but the walls have cracked. PyTorch supports non-CUDA backends now. We have discussed them on the channel such as Vulkan and AMD's own stack have matured and framework used for local LLMs can top non-CUDA paths with competitive stability. The R9700 isn't trying to out cards like NVIDIA 4090 or 5090 on a raw bandwidth. It is trying to offer enough compute, enough VRAM and sane power so a broader set of people can build and run meaningful AI workloads without renting cloud time or buying used mining relics. That's a valid strategic line, in my opinion. So if your pri priority is local inference and uh, you just want to serve medium to large models with longer prompts, 
experimenting with multi gpu tensor parallelism or running image models at high throughput this card makes a lot of sense because 32 gb keeps you in single card territory for many 30ish billion parameter quantization and plenty of diffusion pipelines also um, there is a mood around gear like this that's hard to quantify because you know when i reach out to the community even when i check out few of your comments the joy of attainable horsepower it taps into the old diy thing and feeling where people really love to tune overhaul airflow printing you know of and bracket getting a real workstation built around your needs instead of a vendor's marketing ts so this r9700 give me that vibe because it feeds that spirit where you want to own your own stuff you want to build it with your own hands so it's not really about flexing the biggest single number it's about building rigs that are reliable upgradable and they are your own so look again one thing i really want to mention here is that there is a huge math of multi gpu density because the r9700 is dual slot and restrained on power two to four of them can be a feasible workstation plan if your frameworks can split layers or do tensor parallel efficiently that can beat a single ultra flagship on aggregate vram and aggregate throughput for certain inference jobs with better thermal behavior per slot not every chassis or motherboard will make it easy but it's viable without resorting to the truly unholy builds that i believe the giant triple slot card sometimes force but again there are a lot of uh, i would say reality checks here amd is quite blunt in the fine print they say that this is not for the data center usage which is good enough it is because that's not a drawback i think it's a scope statement if you really need nv link class interconnects enterprise support sls and cloud grade up time i think you shouldn't be getting this card so the thing you feel day one is the absence of uh, panic i think this is good 300 watt is easy on power budget it is you know blowing cooling uh, blower cooling also pushes heat out instead of soaking your case that is good enough for me so i hope that that was useful i also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are agent which is the world's first multi agent workforce desktop application that empowers you to build manage and deploy a custom ai workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks and you will find their link in video's description that's it please let me know what do you think about this new card or would you be buying it or not and by the way one last very important point amd has officially priced it around 1300 us dollars so and i think it will be released on october 27 so let me know if you are looking forward to buying it or not thank you for all the support please become a member thanks